Hi, for this recording, I'm going to show you how to check whether a set of vector is linearly independent and whether they form a basis of a vector space. For example, let S be the set of three vectors 1, minus 1, 1, 1, 4, 6, minus 1, 5, 3. We want to know whether this set is nearly independent and whether the form basis are R3. So if, whether you can find number A, B, C such that linear combination of these three vectors suppose is equal to 0, we are able to whether you can find solution. If A, B, C are all 0, then we know the three vectors are linearly independent. If otherwise, the three vectors are not linearly independent. And to do this, we are going to do some row operation. So first, what you do is write down the augmented metric first. Augmented metric. In this case, and then you're going to perform row operation. When you perform row operation, you know that you start with a leading one. So this is a leading one. And what you're going to do is make sure that the leading one below the entries, entry below leading one are zero. So you can take the first row, so the first row, multiply by 1, add to second row. So that it creates 0 below leading 1. You can also take the first row, multiply by minus 1, add to row 3. So it creates 0 below the leading 1. So this will give you the equivalent metric 1, 1, minus 1, 0 and first row term, add to second row get 0 5, 4, 0 first row times minus 1 add to the third row you get 0 5, 4, 0 alright so this is after the leading 1 and below leading 1 you get 0 after we have finished the First leading one now move on to the second row. The second row entry is five. So we want to read, make the entry five to be one. So what you do is you can take second row than one over five. Right? So this will create a leading one. So this will become in this case one one minus one zero and 0, 1, 4 over 5 0, 0, 5, 4, 0 so after we have created a leading one in the second row what we do is make sure that every entry below leading one and above leading one are 0 so what you can do now is the first row times and the second row times minus 5 to row 3 and so you'll get second row unchanged but when you multiply by minus 5 add to row 3 you're going to get 0, 0, 0, 0 and you take the second row times minus 1 so that you can create a 0 on the first row now add it to the first row and second row to minus 1 add to the first row so you'll get 1 0 and then minus 4 over 5 minus 1 so it's minus 9 over 5 and then second row to minus 1 add to the first row get 0 so in this case we have achieved the set that first row go a leading 1 and everything below leading one and zero. Second row has a leading one and everything below and above it are zero. And there's no more leading one in the third row. So this is a row reduced form. Therefore, in this case, what we can say now is A plus minus nine over five C is equal to zero. B plus four over five C is equal to zero from the first row and second row using that we find that C is free right C is free so that means that 
There are many answers here now. A is 1.8C, B is minus 0.8C, and C is free. So that means that the system equation, that this equation has infinitely many solutions by changing the value of C. That means the solution is not unique. In this case, we conclude that three vector, three vector minus one, one minus one one, one four six, all right. One minus one one, one four six, and the last vector minus one five three. The set formed by this three vector is linearly dependent now because the the Simultaneous system equation will solve that infinitely many solution, right? So the infinitely many solution. Now what I'm gonna do is show you a demo using 9860 cash flow 9860 to solve this row operation. So I'm gonna call up my cash flow calculator. So okay, let me go to menu first and show you how to start. So what we're gonna do is gonna run metric here so and then we're going to enter the metric now this metric has three row and four columns so we like f3 for dimension then you type three for number of row four for number of column and press execute and you start entering number one minus one oh, sorry okay one one minus one zero for the first row then minus one four five zero for the second row and one six three zero for the third row so once we finish already we're going to perform row operation so the row operation is f1 f1 and the row operation is first thing i'm going to for the leading one i want to multiply the first row and add to second row so i'm going to do f3 here so multiply 1 to first row, then add to the second row. Alright, so execute. So I got finished the second row. Then continue, multiply minus 1 to the first row, add to the third row. So multiply minus 1 to the first row, add to the third row. Execute. So in this case, I have finished the leading one in the first row and everything below leading one is alone now. So now I'm going to move on to create leading one in the second row. So in the second row, I want to find, make this equal to one. So I multiply second row by one over five. To do this, I press F2. F2, I say I want to multiply at 1 over 5, 1 divided by 5 apply it to second row 2, execute execute there, so I have a leading one in the second row now I want to make sure that below leading one the 5 must disappear and one on, above leading one, 1 must disappear so what I can do now is F3 again so I say again so I come to here so you can see how I do this F3 so I want to take the minus 5 from the second row add to the third row execute okay then I want to stay F3 again so minus 1 from from the second row add to the first row and then this is the row reduced form. From this row reduced form, we can conclude that this equation has infinite many solutions. That is the end of the recording.